Hi, this is James Melendez, James the Wine Guy, here to talk about German Riesling. It's a fantastic place to grow Riesling, and it's also a challenge. So um, top of mind comes for German wine production, is that all wine grapes from Germany are Riesling, and that is so not true. It's only accounting for maybe 22% of total production, but somehow it floats to the top of the imagination, because first of all, they're stellar wines, great quality. Now I can do other videos about other wine regions and their Rieslings, and their amazing Rieslings around the world as well. But uh, Germany has been producing wine for about two millennia since the Roman Empire. It's about the eighth largest wine production uh, or producer in the world, about 102,000 hectares or 252,000 acres. Now there are 135 grape varietals grown, wine grape varietals grown in Germany. Mainly white, which is about 100 uh, white wine grapes and about 35 red wine grapes. And um, white wine grapes account for 63% of total production. Now, Germany is at the northern boundary of growing wine grapes. And uh, because of that, what's interesting is that Riesling has a requirement of about 130 days to ripen. And uh, in this very northern boundary, that can be very difficult. So on an off year, it can be just very mediocre. But on a, a really good year, it's an exceptional great uh, vintage and uh, exceptionally great Riesling. Now, this varietal accounts for 22% of total production in Germany. Its plantings are increasing. Some of the best known, and I have some examples here, uh, some best known regions are Mosul, Palatinate, Rheingau, Rheinhessen, Nahe, uh, Mittelrhein, and uh, Heische uh, Bergstrasse. So, um, again, Riesling is hard to grow and uh, definitely. Um, I'll show you in this map here that you see that most of Germany's wine region is in the south and west. So you're going to see it in uh, the, the western and southwest portion. And uh, very steep inclines for a lot of the wine grapes in this region. Um, some, some beautiful wines. And I think, you know, for example, Lights here says Ein, zwei, drei. And I think that's to call out that there are dry Rieslings. In fact, the majority of them are. And I think through maybe some uh, experience with the Liebfraumilch um, is a sweeter wine, a low, um, well, it could be low to moderate alcohol levels, but something that just gets in, in the way of thinking of, you see blue bottle, maybe you're gonna pair that with a um, you know lesser quality wine, such as uh, Liebfraumilch, uh, mass market sweet wine or semi-sweet. And uh, something that um, if you're looking for, these are great valued wines. These are, I think, about uh, the most expensive here is about 17. I think this is 13. And this is about 12, I believe, in California, that is. Uh, gorgeous wines. I can't wait. To, uh, I've done a review on the lights. I have uh, to do these two reviews and to do more. Uh, being at the Riesling and Company Tasting in San Francisco 2012 was that uh, great experience of, of tasting the Rieslings, of course, and, and very great quality wines. But also uh, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Meunier, uh, Pinot Noir, um, really outstanding wines and um, things that you don't see very often here, such as a Kerner. Uh, tasted a lot of Muller Thurgau and uh, fantastic, great quality. So I'll do a video as well just to talk in general about all the other wine grapes grown in Germany. So for more wine reviews, please go to jamesthewineguy.com. Please subscribe to my videos on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, Google+, Pinterest, Salud, and Prost.